everybody. I want to welcome in Diana Konkova. She is an attorney and she is joining us live tonight from Kharkiv, Ukraine. Uh, Diana, tell us about what you are seeing and hearing from your vantage point. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for your attention. So I woke up this morning to the call saying that I should wake up since the war has started. And even though we've all hoped that it's not going to happen, it has. And now everyone is very concerned about their families' uh, well-beings. So we have to keep up with what's happening, actually. What is the Ukrainian government telling you? The communication stays the same. We should keep calm. We should not panic. And we should make sure that we don't do anything um, foolish at this very responsible moment. But Ukrainian society is very united and very responsible. We're not, um, we're not going to give up our freedom, as you mentioned. And everyone is very, very um, determined to fight back if we need to. Are you calm? I am as calm as it's possible in the situation when you hear the explosions outside of your house. My parents have been outside of the city and they've been seeing and hearing the explosions for their own eyes. And it's not a very pleasant thing to see. So I'm as calm as it's possible to keep in your mind, but absolutely not as panicked, as panicking as everyone expects us to be, that's for sure. We've packed our things, we're ready to maybe um, uh, move outside of the homes if that's not no, no longer safe, but we're definitely concerned about our well-being. Did you think it would come to this, uh, given the life that, that people in Ukraine have lived over the last eight years with the threat of Putin and Russia? It's been very dynamic, to be honest, and we've all been very hopeful that we are going to be let to live our own life since Ukrainian society has been evolving very dynamically and rapidly. We have a lot of IT industry development uh, happening for the last few years. And since the uh, LDNR uh, proclamation independence, um, of course, everyone has been expecting this to happen. But before that, we've been all thinking that this is just some kind of political manipulation, myself included. But by that, Diana, you mean you didn't expect an invasion? Oh, no, absolutely not. Wow. Maybe not for the last week. Or two. Wow. I'm, you're in Kharkiv, which is in the eastern part of the, the country, as I understand it. Have you seen any of the Russian forces or heard from your friends of Russian forces uh, coming into this part of the country or only heard the explosions? To be honest, I don't have any friends in Russian forces. No, no, Especially I actually, have, now. You see, have, you, have you heard from your friends around town? Has anyone sent you pictures or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. We have seen pictures, and that definitely has brought us a lot of concerns. But we've also been aware of Putin's political manipulations and ambitions. So we thought that was just a way for him to negotiate his way out of no, 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 being brought for, into NATO. For, no, forgive me. I just want to be clear. Have you seen any pictures of Russian forces today, this morning, that have come oh, this through? this morning? Yeah, come okay, in the invasion. Yeah, right. is, is, are there Russian forces in Kharkiv now? At the moment, I haven't seen any tanks okay. or any military right now, but I've heard a lot of explosions myself. Wow. So that's definitely happening. And my family has seen and heard it. I've heard it. Yeah. And it's definitely not safe. An air place outside of the city has already been destroyed. So um, it's definitely dangerous and it's definitely happening. And we're all in danger, but we're still not panicking. At least we're trying not to. Yeah, we know, we know Vladimir Putin's been, tar says that he's targeting airports, military depots, uh, and the like. I'm wondering how we can, as hard as this is to say, that. If the Russian military wants to come in and as brave as the Ukrainian fighters 
are that I was with in 2014 and have talked to since, the, the Russian military can come in. I'm wondering who you all look to for support. Do you think America and Europe are going to come and save you, or is this going to just be up to Ukraine? I'm pretty sure that it's up to Ukraine, and it's always been up to Ukraine. Of course, it's going to be easy, and of course, it's everyone else's responsibility, too, because the question stands, who's next? We don't know how big the geopolitical ambitions of this person are, so we definitely have to make sure we make put in every effort uh, possible. If you could say something to President Biden and to NATO, who is going to make the decision in the next 12 or 24 hours whether or not to impose a price on Vladimir Putin to make him stop or not, because that's still very much up in the air, uh, what would you say to them? What is the plea of the Ukrainian people? The plea of Ukrainian people is that we are a united nation and we're definitely going to fight our freedom. And since you... Americans appreciate freedom. Maybe you have a lot more in common than it seems from the first sight. So if we do, maybe there is a lot of more motivation for you to help us and support us, which you already are doing, and we appreciate about that. But it's definitely not enough, judging from what's happening. So any support will be appreciated, and we are definitely looking forward to it. Diana, you know, given everything that is at stake and everything that you have shared so far, emotionally, the weight of, of what we're hearing and what we're seeing and, and what you are witnessing firsthand has to be incredibly heavy tonight. How do you reconcile what Putin wants and, and the threat to your way of life? Um, how, do, how do you bear that weight tonight? My previous life is basically not existent anymore but i have a new one and i have something to fight for and i've built my life so i don't want to give up on this very easily i can sit uh sit at home and cry over what i've had what i used to have or i can stand up and fight for it and i'm definitely um going for the second option and i'm pretty sure every conscious Ukrainian is going to say the same thing. When you say fight for it, do you mean take up arms? Do you mean assist the military? How, did, how is this going to play out if the if Russian tanks start rolling through your city? Well, if we see a tank, I'm not sure with bare hands I'm going to handle a tank. But if I see that more serious uh, escalation takes place, I'm definitely going to go to the forces and see what I can do and if I can be of any use in there. But I'm also a journalist. I have a journalism degree, so maybe I can be of use in that particular field too. But I'm definitely not going to escape. So you're you're willing you're you're gonna stay and and fight in whatever way you can. Do you worry Absolutely. about do you worry about the tactics the Russians used in 2014? They they rounded up people like you and put them in jail and tortured them simply for tweeting about what the Russians were doing to their town? Well, they cannot torture everyone. They cannot put everyone in jail. And Ukrainians very much are appreciative of their liberty, of their freedom. So it's definitely not going to happen here. We are just not capable of living in the same conditions and in the same mentality as Russian society is used to living in. So I believe, I truly have faith that we're going to be able to fight back. Diana, we are hearing from uh, Secretary of Defense, Secretary of State um, Blinken tonight. He says we are united in responding to Russia and strengthening NATO's eastern flank. So it does appear as though the United States and its NATO allies are coordinating uh, plans to respond um, in a number of ways to what we're seeing happening in Ukraine, your home tonight. In terms of your preparation for what we are seeing unfold, what type of training have have you undergone to equip? you uh, to be able to fight back, as you say? 
Well, first of all, I know how to use some basic uh, guns, and I also know how to provide basic uh, health um, support. And I've been through this training specifically before the situation has started escalating because I felt something like this could happen. So I, I wanted to be ready, and I am, and I'm not afraid as much as it's possible in a situation like that. So we're definitely going to be able to handle it the best way possible. And as people from around the world and certainly here in the United States watch you tonight and hear your message, what do you think is most misunderstood about the situation, about the tension right now in Ukraine and the Ukrainian people? I can't really judge on what's misunderstood and what's understood correctly, but I would definitely suggest check the Ukrainian original media too. And there's a lot of sources that you can go and follow the links and donate to Ukrainian military forces yourself. So you don't really need for to wait for your government to go ahead and help. You can bring the light to the situation on your own social media page. You can go and go ahead and donate your own money. You know, a $10 bill can make a big difference as I'm doing, as every one of my friends doing, as including the friends that live in the United States. They've been doing that too. So I don't know about your judgment, whether you are uh, judging the situation correctly, but I definitely know that it will help if you check the actual Ukrainian media and be as critical about these sources that you're looking at as possible. You know, many had asked if Vladimir Putin was bluffing and if Ukraine was ready to defend itself. Do you feel as though your country's government was ready and prepared for this? Did, did Ukraine and the world for that matter underestimate Vladimir Putin? We've definitely been ready. We are ready. And we've known that this could happen this morning. So we could handle the situation the best way possible. And there are no uh, victims, serious victims, as long as I know for the moment. But we never know what a sick dictator has in his mind. So um, we should never underestimate the enemy. Um, and we should be ready and D at Diana, all times. I hate, I hate, you said something really fascinating I think that was important about we should never underestimate the enemy. For the past eight or so weeks, as President Biden and the rest of the world has warned sort of at a fevered pitch that this invasion was coming and that Russia was going to invade Ukraine, your president really at some, at some point sort of admonished the United States for warning of the invasion. Do you think, did Ukraine underestimate the Russian enemy? Absolutely not. I believe that this was a very wise move from our side because if we have performed any aggressive act towards Russia, that would have been a perfect excuse for Putin to move in with his military forces into Ukraine and say, hey, I've not started this. So we had to make sure we weren't the ones to have started it. And it's very important because we're not looking for a war. We just need to build our own society or, or our own economy and keep our borders safe, our people safe. Yeah, the Wall, the Wall Street Journal uh, sadly now reporting uh, that they're hearing from their sources within the Ukrainian military that already hundreds uh, of Ukrainian soldiers have died in Russian airstrikes and missile attacks uh, around the country. Uh, Diana, what, what's your plan? We have pictures of people escaping out of Kyiv um, and now finally leaving the city. Uh, is there some point you're going to decide and your family's going to decide to leave? Um, I think my family might leave, and I wouldn't judge them for the choice because my sister is under 18, she's very young, and we need to make sure our closest and loved ones are safe. But I'm definitely not leaving because it's up to me whether this country continues to exist. 
Deanna, as, as we watch the explosions happen in multiple cities tonight, you're in Kharkiv. How often are you hearing explosions and can you determine how close they are? I'm not pretty sure how close they are every, every two miles, maybe something like that. But uh, I'm pretty sure that I've heard the last explosion around 15 to 20 minutes ago. Wow. Are you hearing any aircraft? 20 minutes, 30 minutes. No, no aircraft so far. How about sirens, other alerts? I haven't heard any sirens yet.